So guys, today we gotta to address a few things before we get this thing on the street. So first, we're gonna be servicing the rear end, checking over the brakes and everything. We're gonna kinda of give it a once over, and honestly, this should be one of the last videos before we take it out on the street. So first off, we're gonna start by flushing the fluid out of the rear end and then getting some new stuff in there. Uh, I don't think there's any leaks. There might be like a little drip every now and then. I have no idea if it has fluid in it or not um, because I just haven't been on the road with it that much. So, so we're gonna set up a pan, pull this little drain plug out of right there and see what we can get out of here. All right, let's see if I can do this without creating a huge mess. So yeah, no fluid at all came out of that. So we're gonna assume that it's at least below the drain plug on the back. So. Um, I'm gonna reach in there and see if there's any oil in there at all. If not, then we might have some problems. Okay, there is oil in there. It's just below the, the hole, so. So I've got some stuff that I picked up at Tractor Supply and we're just gonna be pumping this. We got a little hand pump by Performance Tool. This is pretty nifty. Whenever you wanna get it in there without making a huge mess. So you just stick the little tube in there and then just start pumping away. Pumped it until fluid starts seeping out of the hole just barely. And then I take my plug, put it back in there. As you can see, it looks like this thing has been leaking a while. So we're going to take it out back. I got the sandblasting hookup for this pressure washer. So I'm going to go ahead, back the truck out and start spraying this thing down. Okay, so I'm gonna explain how this setup works. Basically, you got your pressure washer, and then there's a quick connect wand that goes on the end of your pressure washer, and then a little tube that you run into just a five gallon bucket or a bag or whatever, and it's got a little tube that picks up the sand and blasts it with the water. It's a really good setup because it cuts down on all the dust from regular sand blasting, so we're gonna get this thing fired up and see what we can do. very happy with the way this is running it runs really well and as you can see that did an absolutely amazing job of getting all that built up stuff and God only knows how long it's been caked on there so we're gonna put POR 15 on it like we did the rest of the frame and everything clean everything up and then we'll move on to the brakes All right guys, so here's what we're looking at. We have just a pretty nasty setup here. Everything's just completely coated and a bunch of gunk and stuff. The shoes, the wear doesn't look that bad, but I went ahead and looked online, tried to find some that would fit this brake drum. And I'm seeing a lot for like two inches and I need an inch and probably three quarters somewhere around there. Couldn't find it anywhere until I checked at the local AutoZone and I actually ended up finding them there, which was kind of surprising because online they were listed as two inches. When I went in there, they said it was like 1.8, which is, I think it's gonna work, we're gonna try. And those wondering, yes, I do sit in an office chair while I work on project vehicles. The drum was seized up on the other side. I'm gonna show you just with a couple little taps here. I'm trying to do this one-handed sucks. You get the point. Now it's coming off. Rust and corrodes together here and it'll cause it to seize up. So um, it feels like the shoes inside of that are sticking. So I'm gonna try to wrestle this drum brake off real quick. All right, we're gonna see if we can get the rear drums all put back together. For right now, I didn't order any other parts except for the shoes. Uh, I couldn't find a hardware kit anywhere. So we're just kind of winging it. Hopefully none of the springs snap or anything like that. They all look good right now until we go messing with them. But Let's go ahead and start stripping this stuff apart and see what we can do. Okay guys, so I've got everything all cleaned up. Got some grease on the parts that are moving here. That way it doesn't seize up. 
if any moisture gets to it. So that's all good. And I even hit the springs with a little wire brush just to get some of the gunk that was built up off of them. So, so we're going to go ahead and try to assemble this. Okay, we've got the new brakes on. We've got it adjusted to where it fits on pretty good. So we're going to go ahead over to the passenger side and I'll show you more in depth what we have to do. Okay, so if you've already changed drum brakes, don't worry about this, but this is for the people who have never changed drum brakes ever. Basically, you need to take pictures to remember where your springs are all oriented, and then just take them off one by one. So, okay, there's the first one. And set all your hardware aside as you're going through this. There's the second one, okay. And then there's an adjuster on the bottom and then another spring down here. So you need to get both of those. Sometimes you can just peel the shoes away and then you're gonna to wanna to take these pins out. You just push down this little washer thing right here and then twist it. That one's all corroded up in there. There you go. Push the pin through the back. Again, keep all your hardware. And then you want to take this other side out. Same thing, keep the hardware. That's all there is to it. Once you have everything cleaned up, I just take a wire brush and some uh, brake clean, and then you'll have these little friction points right here. You wanna make sure that you get some kind of brake lubricant on that. There's usually six, sometimes more, depending on your setup. Okay, so once you've done all that, we're going to install everything in the reverse order that we took it off. You make sure that your wheel cylinder is in the little notch that it's supposed to be in, and then you slide that through like that. Then you're going to take the pin, put it through the back. And then run it through the shoe right there. Take one of your little washer doohickey thingies. Slap that on there. A spring. Another washer doohickey thing. Make sure everything's still situated in there. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. There you go. Give her the old push and twist. Then you're going to get this wheel cylinder back in there if you can. There we go. Okay. You're going to make sure everything's situated as it should be. Alright, so then you're going to put the springs back on the pin. Okay. Then this little adjustable thing you're going to throw on after you put the spring in here so one goes through the back side and then the other side goes through the front all right then you tighten your adjuster all the way down and then just kind of work it in there however you can usually at the pry on both parts Okay, so now this pin on the bottom, you can see that you can move this little gear right here. And basically, that'll spread the shoes apart. So that's what you want to do, spread the shoes apart far enough to where there is the very smallest amount of clearance where the brake shoe is not touching the drum. Okay, I've now completed both sides. I put a little bit of POR15 on this brake drum. That way it looks all pretty and doesn't rust. Ignore my pants that look like I was mauled by a tiger, but inside the cab we have really good brake pressure here. So I think we're one step closer to just taking this thing on the road. Would you look at this thing? Finally, besides the muffler, I gotta, I'm just trying on different muffler variations to see what I like, and then we're gonna route it all the way out the back. But two years ago, this thing was just absolutely horrible, and now we're actually making some progress on it. The inside is pretty much finished. Everything looks beautiful in there. And then we just gotta do some body work. The next video for this thing will be actually out on the road and driving unless something crazy happens to where we won't be able to take it out. But 
for sure the next video will be trying to button things up, trying to take it out. I've had it on the street before just for some testing, but never for any kind of like decent ride where everything is completely put together. I have to change my insurance coverage since I'm gonna actually have it on the street. So there's just a few other things that I have to do um, since I'm gonna be driving this thing more often and I wanna make sure I'm covered and doing it all legally. So outside of that, another video that's coming up very soon is trying to start the International Harvester that I bought. Things are kind of off to a rough start because it's just to be expected uh, just the way I buy things. So I like saving the really bad ones and that's kind of what this thing was. It was horrible when I bought it and if you would have looked at me like two years ago and said it would have been in this position anytime soon, I would have not believed you, but just putting work into it, you know, here and there, finally we're getting things done and everything's looking good. But with that being said, the parts for the International are kind of hard to find, so I'm ordering a bunch of stuff and all of it should be on its way within the next like few days. So hopefully before I leave on vacation here in like two weeks, then I'll have another video for you guys maybe getting the international started. Of course, I can't make any promises because we're already off to a bad start. Other than that, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel because there's so much more content coming and I appreciate everyone. We're so close to a thousand, which is a milestone for me. So I just appreciate you guys for subscribing, but I have a very dirty barn to clean up now. So I will catch you guys in the next video.